Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer, and I have been the unfortunate observer of the digression and devolution of the evangelical movement since the 1960s, when my father, Francis Schaefer, became a famous evangelical figure, writing books such as Escape from Reason, The God Who Is There, and so forth. By the time I was in my early 20s and writing and directing a series of documentaries I made with him called How Should We Then Live? And then Whatever Happened to the Human Race, featuring Dad and also C. Everett Koop, who became Ronald Reagan's Surgeon General. Dad was entrenched, and I was entrenched in my small nepotistic way as an evangelical leader of what was becoming the religious right with Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, and the others. Fast forward to the present day. What we could never have imagined as we launched our war against women, against legal abortion, against anyone who stood up to the tyranny of evangelical belief systems, was that in the next century, the 21st century, by 2023, there would be a speaker in the House of Representatives representing the Republican Party that had become the Trump cult, third from the presidency, who would be everything we imagined and hoped for, an extremist evangelical believer who had groomed his own thinking based on that of what was called the Reconstructionist Movement or the Theonomist Movement back in those days, led by people that no one in the media had ever heard of, like Rousseff Rushduni, who was writing that we needed to change America from a democracy as we understood it, where the will of the people ruled, to a theocracy where Old Testament law was applied with the force of law up into including the execution of gay people, the execution of adulterers, the reintroduction of slavery, you heard that right, as a biblical mandated form of labor supported by the Old Testament, supported by the New Testament, that was clearly the will of God for the lesser race, as Rush Juni believed it, of black people across the globe. These were racist, homophobic theocrats who would have put to shame for their tolerance and mercy the Iranian mullahs who put young women in prison where they are raped and killed if they have the temerity to not wear a headscarf. When I began to write my book, you see it behind me, Crazy for God, about my journey out of the evangelical community, I included quite a bit about Rousseff Rushduni and my connection with him and with others back in the 1960s and 70s who were following along with my dad, who were fellow extremists, theocrats, pushing for America to become a theocracy, not just simply to bring it back to its roots in the Bay State Colony and Virginia in the days when America was a Christian white country. But to go further than that, this is what people didn't understand. It basically, the Reconstructionists like Rush Dooney believed that the theocrats who founded the Bay State Colony, people like Winthrop and others, had not gone far enough. And that indeed the founding fathers themselves in the Constitution and Declaration of Independence had strayed from a true Christian vision which was not a democracy, but a theocracy ruled by biblical Old Testament law, literally interpreted, again, including the execution of gay people, etc., the execution of adulterers, the reintroduction of slavery. Of course, when I started talking about this, people would look at me as if I was crazy, that I would take such a thing seriously. Surely America was becoming more secularized, more dependent on science. Weren't we the people who put someone on the moon? Democrats were doing quite well in Congress. We had Democratic presidents alternating with Republican presidents. Republican presidents like the Bush family, especially Bush Sr., seemed moderate by comparison to the evangelical voters, some of whom were already supporting him, bent on taking over the country for their point of view. People like Ralph Reed, Dr. Dobson of the Focus on the Family, my father, Francis Schaeffer. The politicians at that time kind of suffered us 
gladly because we brought them voters, but they were clearly not one of us. Fast forward to the era of Donald Trump. Donald Trump was never one of the evangelicals either. He regards them as necessary idiots to maintain power, easily led fools who can be fobbed off to support his crime family with a few sops like nominating ardently anti-abortion justices to the Supreme Court and federal judiciary, et cetera. But he's all about personal power. Now, however, something else has happened. He has opened the door to people like Amy Coney Barrett in the Supreme Court, who are ideologues driven by the Reconstructionist vision of not just bringing America, quote, back to God, okay, sort of rolling back everything that's happened since the 1950s with feminism, gay rights, and so forth, but beyond that, changing America from a constitutional democracy into a theocracy. This is the aim of Amy Coney Barrett. Whatever she says to the contrary, she was groomed and raised, conditioned and indoctrinated in a weird Protestant evangelical slash Roman Catholic cult that was too extreme for even most conservative Roman Catholics and regarded itself as the true church, the true representative of Catholicism, a Catholicism that would be very at home in the 12th century, a Catholicism that would be at home in the wars of religion in Europe when Edward III of England attacked the French king, claiming the divine right to rule France as well as England, and had whole towns slaughtered and people raped and killed and tortured, things that would make Hamas today look tepid by comparison. This is the background of the religious wars that had plagued Europe and gave rise to the Enlightenment and the Renaissance, where there were men and women, men such as Galileo or the Medici family, backing artists like Botticelli, who began to delve back into the pre-Christian history of Greece and Rome and look for inspiration and was painting things like the birth of Venus or the Primavera, the birth of spring, goddesses and nymphs and satyrs and other things, beings created that were in his work that Roman Catholic strict theologians such as Savonarola hated. And in fact, when Botticelli com converted to Savonarola, he burned some of his, quote, humanistic paintings and began to paint dreary pictures of saints and other religious subjects. And that's not a footnote because we've seen this seesaw between liberty and democracy and science-based view of reality and facts with the superstition and the long reach of the church before. And now in our own age, with a speaker in the house who is a reconstructionist, not just a nice Protestant evangelical, but a reconstructionist who believes in Old Testament law being superimposed onto the American system, who is groomed by people like Tony Perkins, who is an avid follower of not just my father, Francis Schaeffer, but of Rus S. Rushduni and the Reconstructionists, though they don't often quote them because they don't want people to go into those writings and find what they actually support, which is overt racism and the killing of gay people, people who commit adultery, the banning of divorce, punishment for not just adultery, but what they regard as the birth of bastards and illegitimate children, the closing of not only all abortion clinics, but the execution of prostitutes. I am not exaggerating. This is what the Reconstructionists called for. You know, this new leader of the Republican House in Congress said, if you wanted to know what he believed, read the Bible. Unfortunately, if you do read the Bible, you will shudder, because if this is what he wants to do to America, we will not only no longer be a democracy, we will be led by someone like Trump or a smarter version of him, using every means at the disposal of the state to harass and finally get rid of, yes, eliminate those who disagree with this Old Testament biblical law. And by the way, it's exactly the same reason that the settlers on the West Bank feel free to steal the land of Palestinians and have been doing so with impunity. As of the time I'm making this comment, they have murdered in cold blood 186 Palestinians in revenge killings, 
for the Hamas attack on the southern border of Israel. No one's talking about these revenge killings. They're just shooting people down in cold blood, pulling them out of cars, beating them to death, stealing their land, as they have been doing since the West Bank was conquered. Somehow this doesn't rate in the news. Everybody's talking about Hamas and Gaza, while the West Bank is quietly being stolen one acre at a time, families pushed out, and it's its own story. But it's a story rooted to a view of biblical law and the ownership of that land because of what these settlers say are owed them because of the book they believe in, the same book Rusas Rashtuni and the Theonomists in America want to lead America back to, and then beyond that, establish an Old Testament theocracy, the likes of which has never been seen in any Western country since the Middle Ages, when you had the Holy Roman Emperors aligned with the popes trying to craft law according to what they saw as Christian teaching. But even they realized that the Christian gospel of the New Testament had in some ways corrected, at least in their view, the harshness of the Old Testament. But our American theonomists don't want to have anything to do with the New Testament era. They want to go back to the Old Testament. They, like Rusas Rashtuni, who is someone no one's heard of, had an enormous influence on a whole generation of Christian leaders, like Tony Perkins, who then influenced the Speaker of the House, who is a theonomist himself, and is going to use whatever means at his disposal to carry out this program. So we've gone from people who are backstage, as it were, like my late father, Francis Schaeffer, and me when I was an activist on the religious right, to people on the stage, along with Donald Trump whispering in his ear, giving him lists of people from the Heritage Foundation and other places to nominate as justices to carry out their wishes, to a place now where Congress itself is being run by a majority party that is in the grip of a theonomist, a reconstructionist, an actual one who's a true believer, an actual American version of the Iranian mullahs here on our soil now, third from the presidency. Everything that I have been warning about, starting with my book, Crazy for God, up until the present moment, has now come to pass. And the question is, as we face the next election, will these people win the presidency? Will Donald Trump be back in office? And if he is, he will reward this person who helped engineer his insurrection and his attempt to overthrow the last election. And between these two men, there will not be another election as we understand it in America, because the system will genuinely be changed and rigged in favor of a different view of government. In the case of Donald Trump, a venal, secular, adulterer, thrice married whoremonger who doesn't give a crap about Christian teaching, using the necessary idiots as he sees the Christians, giving them things he doesn't care about. He doesn't care if women can't have abortions or that the pill is outlawed or if gays are hounded and lynched and hung from bridges and eventually executed legally, let alone gay marriage. Gay life itself will be in endangered by people like the House of Representatives in its present leadership form. He won't care about that as long as he can remain in power, feed his ego, his crime family can go on profiting from his criminal enterprise as Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, did with his $2 billion payoff from the Saudi Arabians, etc. This crime family of strong men and populists does not give a crap about Christian teaching. They use the evangelical voters. Believe me, if another group of voters rose up and kept them in power, they would turn and give them what they wanted. These are a perfect match a tyrannical crime family being guided by true believers from the religious right, people like Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, who's also a theonomist and reconstructionist, but he's not the leader of the House of Representatives. And people like Ralph Reed, who has been whispering in the ear of Donald Trump from the beginning to get the judges he wanted. But now it is as if Ralph Reed and Franklin Graham are third in line to the presidency as leaders in the House. That's what we now have today. And so the stakes have never been higher. 
and people are talking about this, but even in the media reports on this person, the connection has not been made with the philosophical background from which he comes. Shame on the media for not doing any homework whatsoever on what has influenced this man. They simply talk about his statements, which are mild compared to what he really believes. He wants to bring in laws against sodomy, and they think that's what his aim is. No, the theonomists want to execute gay men and women. I'm not making this up. I knew Rosas Rushduni. At one time, I was of a similar mindset. I have been there and done that. I knew personally the people who guided people like Tony Perkins and Ralph Reed into the philosophy they now have. They say things publicly like, let's outlaw gay sex, let's outlaw sodomy, let's outlaw gay marriage. But if you know them and know who influenced them, what they believe is that gay men and women should be killed. If you know them personally, you know that what they believe is the reason we need to arm ourselves with semi-automatic and military-style weapons is that eventually, when their program comes to pass, if anyone tries to hinder them, they will have an armed group of people as angry and disenfranchised and out of it, and I'm fr sorry, but frankly stupid, as the followers who came to Donald Trump's rescue or tried to in the insurrection ready to commit violence in America. And what they cannot achieve legally through the democratic process, they will achieve through overthrowing it. And when it is overthrown, we will be not like Iran. We will be the Christian version of Iran. It won't be Christian in the classical sense that my father would have recognized, but it will be an authoritarian non-democracy run by a tyrannical mob family, the Trumps, and people they assign after them, or someone like them, or worse, with these theonomists and reconstructionists waiting in the wings to carry out what they believe sincerely, unlike Trump, this leader of the House is not a con artist, he's the real deal, what he believes sincerely in his heart of hearts is God's will for America, the way the settlers sincerely believe that God has given them the West Bank to settle. These people are killers. They believe in the death penalty for gay sex. This is what they believe God has instructed them to do. So I would invite you to do the same thing he did. Pick up a Bible and read it and figure out who and what is now third from the presidency. The next election is one where you are an evil person unless you work your butt off to get Democrats elected to save what remains of our democracy. You are wrong and bad if you are not working to get Democrats elected. Do I think the Democratic Party is perfect? No, I think a lot of them are idiots. They make big cases out of pronouns and all kinds of stuff that has nothing to do with anything. It's as if the house is burning down and all you're worried about is saving some China that you inherited from your grandmother instead of calling the fire department. And by the way, I am pro-trans and pro-gay and all the rest of it, but we are wasting so much time handing our head on a platter to the far right with peripheral issues instead of attacking the large issue. Do we want a democracy or do we want a theocracy? And do we want a theocracy run by people who believe that the only place a gay man or woman belongs is on the end of a rope, who don't believe in democracy and who in the case of this lawyer actually started a group to engineer the demise of gay rights in America and started another group that then worked with Donald Trump to overthrow an election because they saw him as a handmaid of God, so to speak, the way Amy Coney Barrett sees herself to replace the rule of law with a strong man that God would raise up the way this man believes he's been raised up in Congress to do their bidding. Donald Trump didn't deliver much, but he delivered for the evangelical voters. And he will again. And this time they are led by a theonomist in Congress. My name is Frank Schaefer.